U.S. History students, welcome to week three of online learning. And this week, I think we tie together a lot of the things that we've been talking about, and you have two lessons that you'll complete this week. Last week, we talked about industrialization and the process of America becoming an industrial power, which was important because one of the things that you need to be a world power is you need a strong economy. And well before any other country was threatened by the United States military or any culture was envious of our culture, countries were envious of our economy and the economic boom that was happening as a result of industrialization. Now because of industrialization, we had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of immigrants coming to the United States. In the last lesson, we talked about push factors and pull factors of immigration, and I'll say the one that trumps everything is in the United States. Then, now, and forever, we have jobs. You can make a living in the United States. Why do people come from Mexico to the United States in 2020? Because in the United States, you can get a job, and that job will pay you more than the money that you will make doing the exact same thing in Mexico. Why did so many immigrants come to the coast of the United States? Well, they left their home countries because of disease and because of famine and political unrest and chaos and natural disasters. But when they left, especially when you think China, which is not close by any way, shape or form to the United States, why did they decide to come here? We like to tell ourselves that it's because we have freedom. And I'm not going to say that's not the case, but I will always argue that if you don't have food, because you don't have money, because you don't have a job, you don't care about freedom. So the thing that brought most people to the United States is we had jobs because of industrialization. Freedom was kind of an added benefit. Now with all of these immigrants pouring into the United States, our cities became big. In fact, they became huge. New York City by 1900 was the biggest city in the world by population. But our cities kind of became trashy. And a lot of it's because the immigrants who had to work in these cities and live in these cities could not afford nice housing, and we didn't have nice housing for them to live in. So the first lesson, you'll see just how bad the housing was and just how poor the working conditions were in the United States during the Industrial Revolution and really up until we started to fix, thing, fix things during the Progressive Era starting in about 1910. In the second lesson, you will talk about the superstars or celebrities of the Gilded Age. These men, who we sometimes call captains of industry, are men that we still celebrate today for the way that they built the American industry. We'll talk about guys like Andrew Carnegie and how he contributed greatly to America's still. We'll talk about Rockefeller and oil, Ford and the automobile, Vanderbilt and the railroad, and how these tycoons, these business leaders, took the chance, using capitalism, took a risk, and made an incredible amount of money that, in many ways, benefited the country and the people living in the country, and in some other ways, not so much. So you have two lessons this week. The first, living in working conditions during the Gilded Age, and the second, you will talk about these captains of industry. I hope you guys have a good week, and I'll see you after Labor Day. Have a good holiday.